to you, please do not pass us by. There is no other that we can call. Other people are calling other false gods, fake gods, but we're calling on the one true God. We're calling on you, our Lord and Savior. Please do not pass us by. Yes. And we're glad that we have a God that can hear not just me, but can hear each and every one of his followers. Yes. Father God, we're glad that you can answer each and every yes. one of us. The line is never busy when we call on you, Father yes. God. You are always available for us, so we call on you. Do not pass us by. Yeah. We thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to just be out and be about your business, Father yeah. God. We ask that you, de that you decrease our flesh and that yeah. you, your Holy Spirit, increases in us yeah. each yeah. and every day. Yeah. We thank you and we praise you in your Son, our Lord, and our Savior name. Amen. 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 Today's Sunday School's lesson is John, coming from John chapter 17, verses 14 through 24. The background scriptures are also the same, John chapter 17, verses 14 through 24. Today's lesson topic is standing in the gap. Amen. Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 through 33, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, tells us, So the Lord told Abraham, I have heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant. I am going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. If not, I want to know. The other men turned and headed toward Sodom, but the Lord remained with Abraham. Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked? Suppose you find 50 righteous people living there in the city. Will you still sweep it away and not spare it for their sakes? Surely you wouldn't do such a thing, destroying the righteous along with the wicked. Why? You would be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same. Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? And the Lord replied, If I find 50 righteous people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sake. Mm -hmm. Then Abraham spoke again. Since I have begun, let me speak further to my Lord, even though I am but dust and ashes. Mm -hmm. Suppose there are only 45 righteous people rather than 50. Mm -hmm. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 righteous people there. Mm -hmm. Then let Abraham pressed his request further. Suppose there are only 40. Mm -hmm. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 40. Mm -hmm. Please don't be angry, my Lord, Abraham pleaded. Let me speak. Suppose only 30 righteous people are found. Mm -hmm. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it if I find 30. Mm -hmm. Then Abraham says, since I have dared to speak to the Lord, let me continue. Yeah. Suppose there are only 20. Uh -huh. And the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. Mm -hmm. Finally, Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry with me if I speak one more time. Yeah. Suppose only 10 are found there. And the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of the 10. When the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went on his way, and Abraham went, returned to his tent. That was Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 through 33. Today's lesson, we're talking about standing in the gap. In these verses, the Lord is speaking to Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah's sin. Sin is a general term for any wrongdoing, and it is comprehensive of all attitudes and actions the Lord considers unacceptable. Mm -hmm. The sins of the inhabitants of the cities had become so great that the Lord would no longer tolerate it, and he was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Abraham was still standing before the Lord, then he came near. Only those who are close to God can intercede with him on behalf of others. Uh -huh. Abraham's intercession was based on the Lord's character, namely the just judge of all the earth. Amen. And that he is and that he is merciful. Since he is merciful, 
Abraham could ask that he spare the whole wicked city on behalf of the few righteous. Mm -hmm. And yet he is just. Mm -hmm. He will not ultimately, ultimately treat the righteous and the wicked in the same manner. When we pray, we must keep both aspects of God's character in view. Amen. The elimination of Sodom and Gomorrah demanded the total destruction of its entire population. Surely some people, although not without sin, were undeserving of the destruction mm -hmm. that was about to occur. Mm -hmm. Abraham concerned that if God wipes out the righteous with the wicked, others will question his justice. Uh -huh. Abraham was not quite right in that sometimes God's temporal judgment falls on both the righteous and the yeah, wicked. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God always does right, no matter how it appears to sinful man. Mm -hmm. But Abraham's motive was right, to appeal to the reputation of God and to desire that God look good, be glorified in the world. Yeah. The Lord's fairness, as well as his grace, is demonstrated by the sparing of the lives of the righteous, mm -hmm. Lot's and his daughters, even though they did not deserve it. Mm -hmm. Right. We now go to our next set of verses, which will be Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 23 through 31. Mm -hmm. So it says, again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give the people of Israel this message. In the day of my indignation, you will be like a polluted land, mm -hmm. a land without rain. Your princes plot conspiracies just as lions stalk their prey. They devour innocent people, seizing treasures and extorting wealth. They make many widows in the land. Your priests have violated my instructions and defiled my holy things. Mm -hmm. They make no distinctions between what is holy and what is not. And they do not teach my people the difference between what is ceremonial clean and unclean. Mm -hmm. They disregard my Sabbath day so that I am dishonored among them. Your leaders are like wolves who tear apart their victims. Mm -hmm. They actually destroy people's lives for money. And your prophets cover up for them by announcing false visions and making lying predictions. Mm -hmm. They say, my message is from the sovereign Lord when the Lord hasn't spoken a single word to them. Mm -hmm. Even common people oppress the poor, rob the needy, and deprive mm -hmm. foreigners of justice. I look for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I search for someone to stand in the gap in the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. Yeah. But I found no one. No. So now I will pour out my fury on them, consuming them with the fire of my anger. I will heap on their heads the full penalty for all their sins. Yeah. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. Amen. Those verses were Amen. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 23 through 31. Mm -hmm. The problem facing Ezekiel was not that simply that he encountered a few defiled individuals who needed to hear the gospel. Jerusalem herself, Jerusalem, the whole city, mm -hmm. was completely defiled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was no righteous remnant. No mm -hmm. one in the catalogs of leader was left free from the taint of sin, mm -hmm. not even the priests. In Abraham's day, a quorum of ten righteous people might have saved Sodom. Right. In mm -hmm. Jerusalem, there is not even one righteous lot who will escape. Oh, mm -hmm. There was literally, literally no one to stand in the gap for her. Mm -hmm. This, too, is the world in which we live. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we know that we are not saved by our own righteousness, mm -hmm. but by the one who stood in the gap for us, right. Jesus Christ himself, who bore the full weight of our sins on the cross. Yeah. Today's lesson is about our Lord and Savior standing in the gap for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. In Ezekiel, God couldn't find anyone, mm -hmm. but we have one standing in the gap yeah. and interceding yeah. for yeah. us yeah. right now. Yeah. We'll go to our first part of our lesson verses, which would be John, even it's not in our scripture, in our lesson text, but we'll start with John chapter 17, verses 6 through 8. In John 17, verses 6 through 8, is Jesus says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Yeah. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. 
and they, receive, they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. That was John chapter 17, verses 6 through 8. In these verses, the focus of Jesus' prayer was the need of the eleven gathered around him and the disciples that would soon leave. While he prayed specifically for them, the principle of his prayer applies to all believers since that time. Yeah. Jesus stated that he had manifested the Father's name to the world. Mm -hmm. Manifest means to reveal or to display. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the only one who has ever seen God, made him known to his disciples through his words and through his actions mm -hmm. and through his person. To see the Son is to see the Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus described the disciples as those you gave me out of the world. Mm -hmm. The disciples, nor any one of us, have any special origin as Jesus did, mm -hmm. because we came out of the world. Mm -hmm. The disciples, just like us, were part of the world, but were chosen out of the world by God. Yeah. We yeah. are a chosen people. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. disciples belong to the Father, because he chose them, but he entrusted them to the Son so that he might convey his word to them. The previous status of the disciples, nor any of us, is not what's important. What is important is that we keep God's word. Yeah. Yeah. Now, granted, the disciples, nor any of us, had not been and would not be perfect models of consistency following Jesus. None of us have followed Jesus completely. Not one of us have. But Jesus knew the disciples' heart, just like he knows our heart. John chapter 17, verse 9 through 13 says, My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Mm -hmm. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. Yeah. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. Mm -hmm. I guarded them so that not one was lost Amen. except the one headed for destruction, mm -hmm. as the scriptures foretold. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world, so they would be filled with my joy. Yeah. Those were John chapter 17, verse 9 through 13. Mm -hmm. In these verses, Jesus is praying specifically for the disciples that the Father had given him. Mm -hmm. Even though the Father had given the disciples to Jesus, he had not given them away. They still belong to the Father. Amen. And so Jesus begins his intercessory prayer to the Father on their behalf. Yeah. Even yeah. though Jesus is praying for the disciples and not for the world, it does not mean that Jesus was unconcerned about the world or that the world was beyond God's love. Yeah. John 3 and 16 tells us, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if we continue with verse 17 of John, John 3 and 17, it says, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Yeah. Now that Jesus works in the world is nearing completion, he is praying exclusively for his immediate followers who will be left behind as he departs. Yeah. Jesus asked the Father to protect his disciples by the power of your name. Mm -hmm. And the first request is that the disciples be united as one, just as the Father and the Son are united as one. Yeah. Ephesians 4, verses 2 through 6 says, verses 3 through 6 says, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, mm -hmm. binding yourself together with peace. Mm -hmm. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, mm -hmm. one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. Amen. Jesus Amen. knew that his followers would face many trials, and that many would be many trials that they faced would be their own fault. Mm -hmm. 
James and John mother trying to get the best thrones for her kids. Right. Christian breaking fellowship with one another over the color of the carpet. Yeah. Christian breaking fellowship with one another of who gets to sing the lead in the choir. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Jesus prayed that unity would be maintained just as the Father and the Son's unity is. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus prayed for the disciples' safety in the Father's name. In the Bible, name refers to nature because name so often reveals something special about the character of the person bearing the name. That's right. The name of God not only denotes the character of God, but also denotes the power of God. Yes. Yes. Psalm 20 verse 7 says, Some nation boasts of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of our Lord, our God. Yes. Today some might say, we depend on the military. We mm. depend on our economy. But the Christian depends on the nature of God. Amen. We depend Amen. on the name Amen. of our Lord, Amen. our God. Amen. The Amen. God that protected Noah and his family in the worldwide flood. Amen. The God that protected Israel in the wilderness. The God that protected Daniel in the lion's den. Amen. The God that prote protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Yeah. The God that the guarded the disciples in and by the very presence of Jesus while he was on earth. And that God, our God, is still protecting us right yeah. now. Yes, yeah. 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 When you are in thy name, you don't go looking for another name. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Proverbs 18 and 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. Sure. The God that run to him and are safe. Yeah. There is safety that comes from being in thy name. There yeah. is no safety from being in any other name. Our yeah. safety, the Christian safety, is in thy name. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 39 says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Mm -hmm. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. Amen. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Sure. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Amen. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? Amen. No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Yes. Who then will condemn us? Hmm. No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, Amen. pleading for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity mm -hmm. or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sake, we are killed every day. Mm -hmm. We are being slaughtered like sheep. Mm -hmm. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Yeah. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Yeah. Amen. Neither Amen. death Amen. nor life, neither angels nor demons, mm -hmm. neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Amen. No Amen. power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 By the Father's name, Jesus had protected all his disciples and by the Father's name, Jesus is still protecting all of his disciples. Right. Judas, you may ask, well, what about Judas? Mm -hmm. Judas never had a relationship in the first place, and therefore he was not kept. He, mm -hmm. Judas never was um, involved in, he was a fake Christian. He was right. what we would call fake. Mm -hmm. right. Verse 13 tells us that Jesus told them many things while I was with them in this world, yeah. so they would be filled with my joy. 
we all commonly think of Jesus as a man of sorrows, mm -hmm. and indeed he was, but he was also a person of deep abiding joy. Mm -hmm. John 15 and 11 says, I have told you these things so that you will be, you will be filled with my joy. Mm -hmm. Yes, your joy will overflow. Yeah. Right. Jesus' joy did not depend on outward circumstances, no. but on inward spiritual resources that were hidden from the world. Yeah, yeah. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, yeah. the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Mm -hmm. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Jesus' joy was not founded on immediate circumstances, but on the eternal purpose of God. That's right. It was joy that came not from any momentary happiness, mm -hmm. but from the knowing that the Father was pleased with his perfect obedience. Thank you. This is the kind of joy he wants us to have. Mm -hmm. Jesus' joy is not a joy from the world, but a joy that has its origin in heaven. Amen. This joy is not dependent on circumstances, but on the love of our sovereign God, and we too can have that joy through his word. Yes. Amen. Verses 14 through 19 of John 17 says, I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. Mm -hmm. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Mm -hmm. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. Right. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that they can be made holy by your truth. Amen. Amen. In verse 14, Jesus says, I have given them your word. Right. The word of God is the gift of God to us. Mm -hmm. The word of God gives us joy. And this inward joy gives us the strength to overcome. Mm -hmm. And because we are overcomers, that brings a distinction between believers and the world. Yeah. The world hates us because we do not belong to its system and will not follow its practices and standards. Mm -hmm. John chapter 15, verse 18 and, 19, 18 and 19 says, If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. Mm -hmm. The world will mm -hmm. love you as one of its own if you belong to it. Mm -hmm. But you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out from of the world, so it hates you. Mm -hmm. We are no longer of the world, therefore we are alien and strangers to those of this world. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the world hates us just like it hated Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. These verses tell us what the world is really like. The word exposes the world's deceptions and dangerous devices. Mm -hmm. The word causes a division between those who heed the word and those who hate the Lord and the Lord's own. Mm -hmm. God created the world and pronounced it good. Sin entered the world and brought with it evil, suffering, and death. Mm -hmm. right. As a result, the world operates according to Satan's value, which are entirely opposed to God's way at every level. Mm -hmm. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 16 says, do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Yeah. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. People cannot live for the world and in the world word at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Where there is light, darkness cannot exist. Mm -hmm. Darkness cannot abide the, cannot abide the light. Mm -hmm. People who prefer darkness will not tolerate anyone who it threatens their existence by bringing light. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why the world hates us. Yes. We are in the world but not of the world. Amen. And we Amen. must not live like the world. Mm -hmm. In verse 15, despite the world's hatred for Jesus, 
Jesus did not ask the Father to remove believers from this no. darkness-oriented world. Amen. Instead, he asked the Father to preserve believers from Satan. Mm -hmm. The prayer of Jesus was not for God to send some rescue planes to evacuate the disciples from their hostile setting in the world, nor was it to place them in some danger-free zone. Yeah. The prayer of Jesus was to protect them from succumbing to the onslaught of evil or the evil one. Amen. 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 Jesus was perfect in his understanding that the world hated him. Sure. Mm -hmm. And now that he was going to be gone, the world was going to turn that hate onto his disciples. Uh -huh. Jesus knew that representing God in this world is an invitation to a genuine battle. Uh -huh. Amen. Paul described this upcoming battle in Ephesians 6, verse 11 through 18. Mm -hmm. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. That's right. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, yeah. but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, mm -hmm. against mighty power in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so yeah. you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Amen. Then Amen. after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Mm -hmm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Yeah. For Thank shoes, you. put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be able to be fully prepared. Mm -hmm. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to mm -hmm. stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Right. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, mm -hmm. which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Mm -hmm. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Verse, verse 16 of our lesson tells us they do not belong to this world any more than I do. We live in the world, and yet Jesus can say that we are not of the world. Yes. This points not to our location geographically, but to our position spiritually. Uh -huh. The world is not a place on a map, but a spiritual domain, uh -huh. an atmosphere uh -huh. of darkness and unbelief. Uh -huh. It possesses values that are hostile to God. Uh -huh. It is not the domain of the disciples' spiritual identity any more than it was the domain of Jesus' identity. Uh -huh. In verse 17 to, through 19, Jesus prays that his disciples might be sanctified in the truth or to be made holy. Amen. The means to achieve this holiness is through separation. Mm -hmm. Anything that belongs to God or serves his purpose should consider itself holy yeah. and set apart yeah. from common use. To be holy refers to a life that is so aligned with God that it reflects God's passions completely. The word of God is the source of God's power for holy living. Yes. John 15 and 3 says, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Mm -hmm. When you were saved, you were set apart for God. Yes. Yes. As you grow in your faith, you are more and more experiencing sanctification. Mm -hmm. You love sin less and you love God more. Yes. You want yes. to serve him and be a blessing to others. Yes. All of this comes through the word. Mm -hmm. God's truth has been given to us in three editions. Right. His word is the truth, his right. son is the truth, mm -hmm. and his spirit is the truth. Yes. We need all three if we are going to experience, experience true sanctification. Mm -hmm. Verse 19 indicates that Jesus sanctified himself by setting himself apart to do the Father's will, Amen. which included bringing the knowledge of God and eternal life to all who believe and laying down his life for them. Uh -huh. Amen. The uh -huh. disciples are likewise called to a mission of not only proclaiming this truth, but also of living and dying for this truth in their own sanctifications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Verse 20 through 24 says of our lesson, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Mm -hmm. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. Mm -hmm. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Right. I have given them the glory you gave me so, that, so they may be one as we are one. Mm -hmm. I am in them and you are in me. May they, may they experience such perfect unity 
that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Yeah. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Hmm. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. This prayer is one of Jesus' longest prayer, and it's nice to know that he wants us to be with him where he is. Yeah. Yeah. In these Amen. verses, Jesus is praying for all, all, not just his disciples right there, but for all who are to believe. Amen. Jesus yeah. knows that he will soon depart from the world, but also that his disciples, his current disciples, will also depart. Mm -hmm. and that will leave those who the disciple witnessed to, the church, to represent the kingdom in the world. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is praying for the unity of the church. Yes, Lord. If Jesus, in these verses, we have Jesus, we have Jesus placing so much emphasis on the unity of the church in this in this earthly prayer, the unity of the church must be an important concern for all of his believers. Mm -hmm. Amen. The union of the church is not patterned after some earthly organization mm -hmm. or any well-meaning intentions of humanity. Christian unity is not based on the external of the flesh, but the internals and eternals of the spirit in the inner person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We must look beyond the elements of our first birth, our race, our colors, our abilities, and instead build our fellowship on the essentials of our new birth. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Christian unity is facilitated by glory. Verse 22 says that Jesus has already given us his glory uh -huh. within. And verse 24 says that one day we will behold his glory in heaven. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. As we grow in the Lord, the glory within begins to grow and to reveal itself in what we say and do in the way we say and do it. Uh -huh. What used to make us react a certain way now has no effect on us. Uh -huh. People who see the change in us don't see us, but rather they see the Lord and they glorify him. Uh -huh. We are sometimes the only Bible, the only witness that people see, uh -huh. that the world does see. Even the world, even the world is impressed in the way Christians love each other uh -huh. and live together in unity. Uh -huh. This unity must be visibly based on love so that when the world sees them, it will know immediately that we represent Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. John 13, verse 34 through 35. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. Uh -huh. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Amen. The lost world cannot see God, but they can see Christians. Right. And what they see in us is what they will believe about God. Amen. Mm -hmm. If they see love and unity, they will believe that God is love. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. If That's they right. see hatred and division, mm -hmm. they, they will reject the message of the gospel. Uh -huh. This love and unity is not a moral effort powered by our own human energy. Mm. It is an outgrowth of the union modeled on the oneness of the Father and the Son. Yes. Believers yes. should love one another and live in unity. Uh -huh. We trust the same Savior and share the same glory. Yes. We, we will one day enjoy the same heaven. Yes. We belong to the same Father and seek to do the same work. That's right. Witnessing to a lost world that Jesus Christ alone saves us from sin. Yes. We believe the same truth and we follow the same example that Jesus has set for his people mm -hmm. to live a holy life. Yeah. Amen. This concludes our lesson for today. We as believers must continue to live in love and unity for each other yeah. and continue to pray for our, the union, unity that we have that the world will see that and come not to us, but the world will come to Jesus, our yeah. Lord and Savior. Yes, yeah. Lord. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we absent one from another. Amen. 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 Amen.